In our lab, we typically try to characterize mechanics that is occurring at an interface. So we understand what fluids are like and we understand what solids are like. But often when you put them next to one another, where there's some adjacency or an interface, the, the rules of mechanics that govern those interfaces are less clear. And there can often be nonlinear responses that are less well understood. In our lab, we focus on trying to explore those nonlinear responses. In order to do that, we typically try to characterize deformation or flow. And that's usually something that we do with imaging as a tool. So this, for example, this setup right here is an apparatus that's adapted from uh, some work that I did in my PhD studying droplet impacts on smooth solid surfaces. And what we're looking at here is a soft elastomer, a little piece of rubber, that's going to make an impact on a rigid glass surface. And the imaging modality that we're using to look at that interface is one that allows us to directly observe contact formation between the elastomer and the glass. Whenever this elastomer comes into the surface at a relatively high speed, the air will fail to drain and instead be compressed. So what can happen there is that the air can be so compressed that it deforms the elastomer. And with this imaging modality, which is based on the principle of total internal reflection, we can then characterize the deformation of the solid, the, the space that's comprised of the air in between the elastomer and the glass, and we can do all of that at very high rates either using a conventional high-speed camera, like we have here, or we could use a normal camera with a different method that we developed in a lab that we call the virtual frame technique. The virtual frame technique it basically works by us opening the exposure time of the camera. And with this particular optical configuration with total internal reflection, we end up having extraordinarily high contrast between regions where we're in contact with the surface and regions where we're not in contact with the surface we can basically obtain a grayscale image that, where the grayscale essentially indicates the location of contact regions between the elastomer and the glass um, at the time that it actually made that contact. And by modulating the pulse of the light that we send in to make that image, we can record more or less arbitrarily rapid frame rates. So we can obtain frame rates as high as tens of millions of frames per second. At EPFL, there are a number of colleagues who are working to advance the forefront of different imaging methods, both on the hardware side and on the computational side. And that's an extremely exciting area from my perspective, because these computational approaches to imaging are opening up all sorts of new avenues and doorways that we can then use to carry out these mechanical characterizations that we wish to do for our, our group's research. In particular, with the computational imaging approaches, that's a, a set of tools that would be available to us that will allow us to make exciting advances in characterizing and quantifying the noise level of the different methods that we're using. So we can say very quantitatively how precise our measurement is, which is, of course, very important, being able to quantify your error. Um, and then on the hardware side, being able to push the boundaries of uh, of what can be done that always opens up new doorways and new, new paths forward for, for fundamental research.